we are at Crofton Beam Engines in Wiltshire and you may be wondering well what the hell is that it is in fact a grade one listed well water pump essentially that pumps water from the what reservoir Wilton water Wilton water reservoir, reservoir into the Kennet and Avon, Avon canal. canal and today is a special day because it is one of their steam days which means we're we steam. should be able to see it actually working and mm. pumping water. The chimney is 25 metres tall and was built in 1807. Well, there's the reservoir. This is the canal. That's actually a lock just there. And just in front of me here is a working railway line. We've got a few trains coming through already. And behind me is the chimney and the pump station and that is where we're going in to see the steam engine it's a very interesting this plaque actually says it's the oldest beam engine in the world not just england so i don't know if you just saw those flames in that wheelbarrow but that is the uh, ash and a bit of unburnt coal and then what they do is because it falls for the grate they uh, just lob it and that is the uh, result that is what's inside the boiler just there look so they're pumping water into it at the moment get some of that steam going and you see the water level in there got a number of steam engines on display here now, the steam that they're running from is actually from the boiler, which is uh, behind me here. The one I've just been showing you. Now, I hadn't noticed before, but the boiler is covered in bricks. Now, it's obvious now, isn't it? Now, I'm thinking about it. We're in the cylinder head room at the moment, and they have two pistons, two engines go, uh, in here. The far one isn't actually uh, being used at the moment. It's just this one here. And uh, this is actually the cylinder head. And this is the piston rod, and it's attached to the piston, which slides up and down the cylinder. And it's being moved by steam. And you can really feel the piston moving up and down through the floor. And these are the valves which let the steam in and out of the piston. I wasn't expected to see this type of technology in the pump house. Take a look at that. This is called their Mechatronics Project and it is, they're using the state-of-the-art technology to monitor the performance of the engines, these 200-year-old engines, make sure that they're, they're doing okay, they're not kind of worn or anything. I like it the way it's got about the steam pressure, the boiler temperature and the throttle valves. We're going up some stairs now. That looks impressive, doesn't it? Wow. This is one of the beams. It is eight meters long, weighs six tons, and uh, it was built in 1812. Now, the, how this works is that at one end, that in there, is where the engine is, of the piston we've just seen. And as that pulls the beam down, this end, the water piston pulls the beam back down in a seesaw type of fashion. It looks like they've got the other engine working. Look. and every pumping station needs its own Henry the Hoover. But if you think about it, the technology that we're looking at now is still being in use today in the modern car. And I'm not talking about electric cars, of course, I'm talking about petrol and diesel cars, maybe not diesel. And the only difference, major difference is, it's not using steam, but he's using a gas, but also he hasn't got that spark right in this, this steam engines don't have that spark just hot steam the gas fascinating i think what do you think let me know and what i mean by that is yeah you've got your pistons you've got your cylinder you've got your piston rods and you have the valves you have valves on a on a petrol and diesel engine as well letting the uh, inlets and the outlet of the gas all very similar stuff so this rod here is being protected so is this one, but this one in the middle of the floor isn't. This is called the well head. And the whole point of the engine and the entire building, in fact, is to pump this water. 
that's it and does nothing else we're going into the driving platform and that is where an engineer controls the amount of steam that goes into the engine what we have here is the driving platform the analog to the camshaft of your car but for a steam engine this controls all the different valves and most of the time you leave it running by itself up here we have a throttle valve it controls how much steam goes into the cylinder up here the control for the inlet valve when the steam goes in, the control for the equilibrium valve, allowing steam to be transferred from the top of the cylinder to the bottom, um, enabling the return stroke. And at the bottom, the control for the exhaust valve and the exhaust valve itself below. That exposes steam underneath the piston uh, from the last power stroke to a cold condenser, turning the steam into water, creating a vacuum, and that suction providing more than half of the engine's power that was one of James Watt's great inventions, doing the cond condensation outside of the cylinder so you don't cool the metal down each time and thus saving a lot of coal, making the engines much more efficient and much more cost effective to run. Now the largest spanner what we've actually used on Herman is a 41 mil socket about that big. Uh, and that was to get the front wheels off, the front hubs off. Check out these tools here, look how big they are. What the size of that thing? Humongous, an even bigger one over here. Number one piston rod nut. Look at that, huge. We are near the end of the pump room and uh, these, these large things here, there's one here and then one here. They're the actual cylinders, so the piston's going up and down there. They're, they're warm, they're not hot. I would, I would expect it to be a lot hotter than that. Right, we're going to the well now. Ooh, there's a weird smell coming from here because that's the water that's coming out the bottom of the cylinder. And so all that pumped water comes out of this pumping station and into this canal looking thing. This is actually called the leet. And the other end of the leet is where it pours into the canal itself. I think they've got both engines going now. Out of one of these is coming 250 gallons or you could say that's a cubic meter of water or a ton of water. Well, I found that totally fascinating. What did I you? I thought you were never going to come out. <laughs> Dear. Darling, have you gone past your time? Sir? Yeah, I've, I think I've um, three groups of people went by yeah. me when I was in there. <laughs> but we were late though. But oh yeah, I found that really good. Good. Should we go around again? No, no oh. more, no, no. So why are we here? What, a Crofton Bee Museum? Yes. <clears throat> well, uh, we got a message, a comment on one of our previous videos when we was doing the uh, the canals, the Ken and Avon Canal from Devizes to Bradford on Avon. Avon. Yeah. And one of the comments was from a Chris Brown who said he was visiting the place and it's a must see. So ah, you thought, I thought you'd come along. I thought, what the hell's Crofton Beam Engines? I looked it up and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. Mm. So yeah, and when I looked it up on their website. You can't just come here, you've got to actually have, uh, they have these special steam days and it just happened to be this weekend. And how much was it? It was £12 each, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right, £12 each. Yeah. Okay, but do you have to pre-book or can you just turn up? Yeah, I pre-booked. I, I don't know if you can just turn up. Mm. I don't think you can, but it looked like, well, they did ask if we had a booking. Yes. And, yeah. Okay. Very interesting, mm. good half day out. Yes, I mean, the thing is, I don't know how long you're meant to be in there, but you were in there for hours. <laughs> it wasn't hours. <laughs> it wasn't hours. No, but, but just yeah. a morning, isn't mm. it? Now, the, the one thing I should point out is, and uh, we came in a car because it's only an hour away from us, uh, but I had the, uh, the Herman mine when I was driving mm. up here. You know, could we have driven her? Because that was an option, just drive... Herman here and camp out somewhere just mm. for the weekend. 
However, the roads are narrow, not too narrow, but the car park uh, is quite small and it's level. Uh, so that could, was fully booked, wasn't that it? Was so fu that was full, yeah, that, that was full. But they have an overflow, huge thing in the field. But the entrance to it mm, is, is not pos is is too narrow mm. and too low because of the trees, so and it's up a advisable. kind of a it's kind of up a goat track, isn't it, for about 10, 10 meters. But uh, yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't have driven the Herman up there. No, it's a, it's kind of <clears throat> I think you'd have probably got a largish car up there like a Range Rover, but you would have been the, the branches I think would have been scraping on the roof. Yeah. So there you go. This is the entrance that we came in in the car. This is the overflow car park. And I just asked a member of staff, where would we, where would we have parked our motorhome if we came in that? And she said we would have parked in the, the normal car park with all the tarmac and whatever. Uh, however, if we'd told them that we're going to be arriving in a motorhome, they would have cordoned off a place for us so we would have had plenty of space. So if you are going to come in your motorhome, a camper, Give them a call first and see if they can uh, cordon off that area for your motorhome. Now we're sitting here having our lunch and something I noticed, I thought the chimney wasn't working. I thought it was kind of, um, I don't know, dead chimney. But you can see that there's actually smoke coming out of that chimney and there goes a train. And that's how close we are to the railway line. And it's a little known fact that back in the 19th century, they did actually have Wi-Fi. Now we're back outside standing next to the chimney. You really can smell that, Ooh, that like soot it. smell. You like it? Yeah. That was the cause of all the smog and whatever back in the day. Well, yeah, but it's not as bad as that, is it? Well, no, but yeah, it's a, it's a interesting smell. Let's just call it that. I wouldn't want to be breathing it in all day, no. though. No. Five minutes or so is fine. Yeah, that'd be enough to kill us. <laughs> right, let's go and get some some illness somewhere else. <laughs> I just want to say a huge thank you to the volunteers at Crofton Beam Engines. They were superb, very informative. So that is the end of this video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe and all that malarkey. Bye-bye. Take goodbye, Zoe. Bye.